I am going to talk about uh, large mouth and small mouth. So yeah, hit me with the first one. These are some beauties, right? Uh, we got a brown fish, we got a green fish. I'm going to talk about when to target which and why we're doing that and, um, and how they differ in behavior. And then I'm going to talk about how they, they trigger strikes. And it's kind of funny on uh, in tournaments when I fish up in these multi-species lakes, we get drawn out with co-anglers. A lot of you may be in a co-angler. Who has fished as a co-angler before? I don't know I have as a non-boater. And I feel, always feel bad because they asked me the night before the tournament, Pete, what are we going to be fishing for tomorrow? You know, what should I rig? And I'll tell them I got 20 rods rigged for smallmouth and I got about a half a dozen rigged for largemouth. So we're going to do it all. <laughs> and uh, usually they're limited to six rods, so it's difficult to be prepared with, for, for multi-species. But I'm going to tell you how I do it. Okay, why change between the species? The reason for the reason why I'm always looking to jump back and forth between the two species is because at any given day or time of day, the conditions are going to benefit the the biggest fish for any particular species. In other words, four and five pound smallmouth are hard to come by, but when the conditions are right, that's what you want to be fishing for smallmouth for them. And same thing with largemouth. When, when you get those bluebird, pristine, calm, high pressure days, it's hard to get those big largemouth to bite. They do a lot of chasing, their strike zone shrinks, and it, they become very, very challenging to catch. But when that condition is tough on largemouth, it's usually good on smallmouth, and I'll tell you why that is. What is the difference between these species? The largemouth are, are ambush feeders, right? They're going to be tight to cover a stump, let's say, and they're going to dart out and they're going to ambush their prey and they're going to go right back to their little home there. You know, that's whether it's a dock piling, a stump, a grass clump, that's how they operate in very, very short bursts of, of speed, capture their prey, and then shut it down. They relate very tight to the cover compared to smallmouth and spots. Um, they prefer conditions that allow them to get closer to the bait. What are those conditions? They're low light conditions, wind conditions, uh, stained water conditions can be a real benefit for largemouth. And, and they become trickier to catch when it's bright and sunny. Uh, they just, they, you can, not that they can't be caught, not that you can't win a particular tournament in a bright sunny day with largemouth, but they definitely, the big ones especially, come a little bit more challenging when you get those bright conditions. Smallmouth are a little different. They're swimmers. They love to chase. They love to cover flats. They love to move. They love to chase schools of bait fish. And they relate loosely to cover. Like, for instance, uh, a, a rock that's out on a flat, a largemouth is going to pin his nose right to it, and he's going to come out and ambush and go back and, and live on that rock. A smallmouth is going to be satellite around that rock. He's going to be swimming around trying to chase bait fish into the rock to feed on them. He's going to swim around, push bait fish up to the surface, and then come and swim around that rock. He relates to it a lot looser than a largemouth will. And when I first started fishing for smallmouth, I was confused by it because I would fish for them like I do largemouth, where I'd get my boat right up tight to that, that rock, and I'd pitch my bait in there, and I'd try to catch them that way. But what I found was I had much better success when I fished my way up to that rock or rock pile and then fished around that rock pile and beyond it when I was fishing for smallmouth because the smallmouth were around the structure and not pinned so tight like the largemouth are. And that's really important to know when you're, when you're fishing for different species. And they're sight feeders. Not all the time. I fish for smallmouth in stained water a lot and even muddy water in some of our rivers. But generally speaking, they prefer the clear water and they want to be able to see their prey. And so when the conditions are favor visibility, that's a smallmouth day. And that usually means when the sun's shining. Uh, when I'm fishing for smallmouth and maybe it's been sunny and high pressure while I'm preparing for any particular tournament and I'm catching schools and schools of smallmouth and I'm ready to clobber them in the event and I wake up on tournament morning and it's drizzly and cloudy, 
Guess what? The smallmouth bite just got tough. The big ones are going to be hard to catch. Not that they can't be caught, but they get harder to catch. So when I'm confronted with that condition, what I do is I... Welcome to Bass University TV, an online video training course where you'll learn champion bass fishing techniques from pro anglers Pete Gluzek, Mike Iaconelli, and their talented special guests. From on the water to in the classroom, you'll learn sound techniques and strong fundamental bass fishing skills. Watch hours of video content on multiple topics at your own pace for a low monthly fee. Cancel at any time. Information is power in the sport of fishing. So learn from the very best. Subscribe to Bass University TV today.